I'm Deborah Corsini, and I'm the curator of the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. And I'd like to welcome you to our exhibition of wonderful quilts from a private collection, Collecting New York Beauty, Bill Vulcaning's Passion. This show looks at a personal collection of a particular quilt style called the New York Beauty Quilt. And it covers a range of quilts from the 1850s to the 21st century. We're very excited to have this exhibit here because it's a unique experience. People get to see the development of a quilt pattern and how it changed over the years and the different variations that people have made using this particular pattern. Um, Bill Volkening is a young collector, and he's been collecting for about 25 years. And behind me is an example of a really beautiful quilt. It was actually the first quilt that he ever saw, and he was so entranced by it that he had to purchase it. It's an example from 1850 from Kentucky. So it's actually kind of interesting because the name, although the name is now New York Beauty, before this, the quilt patterns may have been called something else, and we don't even actually know what the names may have been. It's sometimes called crown of thorns or some other kind of pattern. And as we go around the gallery, I'll explain a little bit more about that. But he was so entranced by this beautiful quilt. It's in amazing condition, and it was the start of his collection and really the beginning of his quest. So I want to point out a little bit about the pattern. Essentially the pattern is a block and each block has a circle that's pushed into the corner and it has this crown of thorns that radiates out from it. And then the blocks are divided by this sashing that also has very intricate pointed edges to it. And then there's a cornerstone dividing the sashing and in the center is another circle with radiating spikes. So it's a very complicated pattern to make. It's not for the beginner. It's not an amateur's pattern at all. And you think that, you know, there, there wouldn't be that many examples of them. So it, it's not that he can find these quilts every day, but over the years he's been able to amass this wonderful collection of this particular style. And the other thing about this quilt that's so wonderful is it has an amazing, intricate quilting. Of course, all of this was done by hand. Okay, we'll move into the next gallery. The quilts in this gallery are some of the earliest quilts from his collection, and earliest I mean 150 years ago. So they're from the 1850s, the 1860s, Many of them are of southern origin from Kentucky and Tennessee. And as I already explained, the pattern is very complicated. So what you see in this room are the various variations of the pattern. The earlier quilts tended not to have borders around them. They have a lot of hand stitching and hand quilting and with intricate patterns that sometimes mimic the shape of the circles. The piecing is really um, complicated. There are small pieces that radiate out from the circles. And what you see are the variations on the theme. Most of them have light colored backgrounds, but there are a few examples in here that have darker backgrounds. And the darker background is very effective in terms of the graphic quality of the quilts. A uh, few of the examples have variations where instead of a pieced sashing, there's applique. And there's one example where the quilt is actually on point. In other words, instead of in the geometric on a vertical, the whole angle of the quilt has been turned to a 45 degree angle. So again, it's that idea of a pattern that made its rounds from one section of a country 
of the country to another, from one person's idea of how to develop this pattern. And that's what's so fascinating about seeing these patterns is that they are filled with that wonderful personality of the quilter and um, their ability to create with this wonderful, this wonderful pattern. which was a batting company, created a pattern which they titled the New York Beauty. And this is an example of that pattern. So quilters would buy the batting and then they got this pattern to follow. And to the right of, are two quilts that are made in this style. So think about the 1930s and what was going on. It was the time in New York where all of the buildings were being built, including the Chrysler Building with its radiating arches on the crown on the top and then the Statue of Liberty that had the radiating crown as well. And so the name New York Beauty became synonymous with the idea of New York and the Empire State. And people began using this pattern again and created patterns in this style. The original coloration was in a patriotic red, white, and blue but then there was also a sunnier version in yellows and white, which, which has, when you think of the Depression era and what was going on then, it was kind of an uplifting coloration. So these two quilts to the right are variations on this theme taken from this pattern. And many of these quilts in the exhibit are labeled unknown name. It's, the name has not been identified, now called New York Beauty, and this is because of this pattern developed by Mountain Mist. showcases the 20th century quilts and, and examples of the evolution of the pattern. 
I'm standing in front of a quilt, Cinco de Mayo, by a group of women that made this using a paper piecing method. And it's a really exuberant variation of the New York Beauty pattern. So um, if you look closely, you'll see all of these wonderful, colorful, contemporary fabrics. And they are put together, and the pattern has a lot of variation in it. It doesn't look like a typical New York Beauty pattern, but it's, it's an example of how the transformation of the pattern and the adaptation of the pattern has developed in the 21st century. So um, now the semicircles are still in the corners, but they've been broken up, and the whole blocks have been rearranged. And it's a grand scale quilt. It was actually done as a raffle quilt, and someone won it, and then a few years later decided that they didn't really know what to do with it, and contacted Bill Volkening, and at, he added it to his collection. Here's an example of a, another modern New York beauty style quilt. It was made by Christine Rorbel, and it's made from a contemporary fabric called Great Cities. So within the fabric, you see San Francisco, Seattle, Chicago, Los Angeles, and New York. And it's particularly touching to see New York because located within the fabric, you'll see images of the Twin Towers, which I need to point out right here. And it's, it's very poignant, especially to Bill, because he was traveling on 9-11 on an airplane when the towers fell. And he lived in New York. He's, he's originally from that area. And so when this quilt came to him, he was very thrilled to have it. And it's a wonderful example of a contemporary quilter using fabric that's available. And the, the fabric and the name of the quilt is, is a wonderful match. The um, white is such a sparkly gives such a sparkly radiance to the quilt, and she's edged each of the blocks with red, a thin red border, and it's a very elegant piece and a wonderful addition to his collection. group of quilts from an exhibition called Tasty Food Related Quilts. They're quilts that deal with things that are close to our um, heart, which is the warmth and comfort of food and how it's just this universal experience. Behind me is a quilt by a young San Jose artist, Yolanda Guerrera. And Yolanda made this super-sized tortilla quilt because it reminded her of home. Uh, her mother used to make tortillas when she came home from school and she said that she could smell the tortillas cooking blocks away when she walked home and that would be their afternoon snack. And the idea of tortillas and comfort and home was something that she wanted to recreate. She actually printed this fabric, digitally printed it. She designed a tortilla fabric and then had it digitally printed in this very large size. You can see it's totally super sized. And it's machine embroidered with the words love and home all throughout. This is an example of a small quilt that's from our collection. It's called Italia al Dente and it's by Cindy Cooksey. It's made in the style of a Baltimore album quilt, which means that all of the pieces are appliqued. It was made from one line of fabric Italia, the Italia collection, and that was designed by Deborah Corsini, me, <laughs> in my former life as a textile designer for P&B Textiles. P&B donated a number of quilts to our collection, and this one is showing for the first time 
because it fits the theme of Tasty. And Cindy Quixi created this wonderful quilt with the four Italian food groups. We have wine and bread, then you have cheese and eggplant, garlic, and olive oil, pasta, and for dessert, gelato, espresso, and fruit. So it's a really charming example of a contemporary quilt that um, definitely fits this theme of tasty. And I hope that you will have an opportunity to come and see this show. We're actually doing a second Tasty, Tasty 2, in February. And we're having a whole new group of quilts that will be on exhibit. Thank you. Happy to be here at the Museum of Quilts and Textiles to show my work called Out of Chaos. Um, these are 10 pieces that I've produced in the last year with uneven backgrounds, uneven borders, and uh, lots of reference to a trip I took to, to London, and also my, my love of color and shape and pattern. Why do you call it Out of Chaos? Order out of chaos. When I'm quilting, I have tables full of pieces, and it looks like chaos. Um, I have strips and chunks, and and uh, and they pile up and they reconnect, and out of chaos comes a whole. And I think of I think of my day as that, as structuring something that is very untethered in the morning bringing it together, making some sort of semblance and reason out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you imagine that life in general can be chaotic and this is your way of bringing order to it? I think, yeah, I think life in general is chaotic and I think we're all struggling to bring some sort of rationale to it. Which of these pieces is the most orderly to you? The most orderly? I think it would probably be the one behind you. Want to talk about that? Sure. This piece began with uh, these African hand printed pieces that I had big chunks of and I didn't know how I was going to use them. And I started to make these little frames, these little pictures, using a piece of the African fabric and then bordering things. Until I had, I don't know, 15 or 20 of these up on a wall. And I liked the way they floated, but they needed something to connect them. So I built this plus sign, this cross. The blue worked out really well, and this is all I had of it. I didn't have another inch. So that's what had to work with it, to border and line the cross. And then getting all the pieces to look like they're floating and not lined up, which is, is a way of ordering things, but I don't particularly like that. I wanted them to look like they were floating. So the, the stitching together uh, turned out to be quite interesting. Do you have a piece here that's reflective of how you were not quite able to bring order to chaos? Hmm. Which is the most disorderly? Let's put it that way. Well, the most disorderly is the one that I was just in front of, the red one.
And this is a very personal quilt, and it has to do with breast cancer and my journey through breast cancer. And before I had surgery, I built this quilt thinking that I was gonna take it into the chemo lab with me and keep warm. But it got too big, as most of my pieces do. How do you feel when you stand before it right now? Hmm. Um, I feel embraced, warm, content. It's a, it's a moment, but not a, not a whole story. Thank you.